Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. We're going to take our look at August sales of Flesh and Blood products off of TCG Player. Of course, first, as every month, welcome to Wraith, Arcane Rising, and Crucible of War Unlimited Boxes. And I've pulled the horizontal axis here to go all the way back to April, five months ago, because that's when the market peaked before the summer, before LSS had to face all the tall offerings from WotC this summer. And, you know, at this point, these are legacy products. They've been out a long time, and it's really hard to discern much from the sales of them. It's going to be very small sales of these very old products every month going forward. And so it's really hard to say that there's much meaning in the fact that, well, sales were down 52% of this box when it started at 60 and went to 30 or sales were up 145%. You're just starting on such a low base that it doesn't have a lot of meaning. It is a little bit interesting, this Crucible of War spike. And if we come in here and we change this and we look at daily boxes sold and we replot it. So this is how many boxes each day were sold of Crucible of War. And what you'll see in here is we had this one day with 37 box sales. And I went back to the raw data on TCG Player and looked at it. And it appears that one person came in and bought nine cases of Crucible of War Unlimited on that day. Interesting, but not really long-term uh, important. So if we come back over here, we'll switch this to the next three. And of course, the first edition versions. And you can see the price coming down the same as we did the first three unlimited boxes and then we get out to tales of aria and everfest first editions where the supplies were higher and so they really didn't enjoy that uptick in price from about november through april looking at the table of month over month sales of course again yes one set was down 41 percent one set was up 60 percent but again the bases that they were coming off of were very low so Small spikes can make big differences in those month-over-month -month numbers at that point in their life. And the next time we get a bonus buck sale, if smart buyers want to come in and buy a lot of, box of these, boxes of these, you would see a huge spike in the month-over-month -month numbers because of that. But again, it would only be indicative of the fact that we had had a bonus buck sale, nothing really to say about flesh and blood itself so i will throw history pack volume one and uprising onto here and of course history pack has come down a bit uprising being a newer set with potentially unlimited printing and no first edition versions and coming a bit later again really did not enjoy that price appreciation earlier this year if we come over to the month over month table and give it time to load there we go both of them seeing drops in sales but again low basis now, I want to change things up here. I'm going to show Dynasty, Outsiders, and Dust Till Dawn. And I'm going to put them all together since those are the three most recent sets. And of course, the interesting thing I've talked in previous months about how Dynasty eventually outpaced Outsiders on cumulative spend. This is total number of dollars spent. And I've changed this horizontal axis to line up the release day of all three of these products, so showing their relative life cycles next to each other and how they were doing comparatively at the same point in each of their lives. And the nice thing to see is Dust Hold On is maintaining this lead, most recent set, and that's what we want to see is steady, gradual growth over time. And what we'll really want to see as we go out month after month after month and I can go ahead and kind of show it here. You know, once we get this pulled out to say 100 days post-release for Dust Till Dawn, we'll like to have seen that it's maintained that lead over Dynasty and maybe increased it a little bit. And for that matter, Bright Lights, when its time comes for release, we hope that it at least matches Dust Till Dawn or if it's less on the cumulative spend basis, that it's not considerably less. And thus far, there's really nothing to say about Bright Lights. Of course, it is still over a month until release. It's sold a mere 10 boxes so far on TCG Player because it's just not on people's radar yet. It's too far out from release. So, you know, going forward into September now, these are great products, especially the early boxes. And I get a question maybe once or twice a month. I get this question from somebody in comments or messages, and it's, what should I do if I don't have any flesh and blood boxes back in the closet and I'm interested in starting now? And what I always tell people is decide how much money you want to spend and then go and just divide it evenly between those first three unlimited boxes and the next three 
first edition boxes. And the reason for that is that, of course, Welcome to Wraith Unlimited. It's the very first expansion ever. It will always be a popular box for collectors in the future. Arcane Rising Unlimited, that's what really cemented the game as viable and good and a long-term winner. Crucible of War Unlimited, of course, there's less of that in the world than a lot of people appreciated for a long time, and that's going to help it with long-term price appreciation. And then those next three first edition boxes, Monarch, Tales of Aria, and Everfest, of course, those have the last of the original limited printing cold foils, and that will help their price in the long term. And so I always tell people just go and lay back equal numbers of all six of those boxes and just build up that. And that's what I did for a long time. I, I originally had a lot more boxes of Welcome to Wraith and Arcane Rising Unlimited, and I stopped buying those and started catching up with all the rest, and I'm nearly caught up. So at some point, hopefully, we'll soon get a bonus box sale. I can make some more progress towards catching up on there. But, you know, in the long term, Flesh and Blood is here to stay. It's a great game. It's very popular. It's doing the right things. The management is doing the right things, and it has a long and bright future. So I think this kind of situation we've been in for the last couple of months where we have the opportunity to see these prices having fallen and we can go and pick up these boxes after they've come down off of these April highs. It really gives a great opportunity to lay some more back in the closet and enjoy the price appreciation in the future. So let me know what you think, guys. I've been doing these flesh and blood price and sales data updates every month for about ooh, 18, 19, 20 months now. I plan to just keep doing them on into the future. Subscribe for that. Otherwise, for the rest of the TCG investing information that I give, the videos I make, the things I talk about, come along for the ride. Thanks to everyone who makes this content possible, especially my supporters on Patreon. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and join me on Final Trade.